Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the Stock Swoosh Show post-market review here of LL. This is gapping down. This is happening live right now at 5.41 Eastern Time. Boom, there it is. All in its glory. Uh, and, boy, this is really tanking, isn't it? So the stock closed, okay, today. Let's go over here. Uh, closed at 70.40. It's now at $57. And there you have it. So this is going to work tomorrow as a short. This is a good gap. This would rate according to my system. I have not rated yet. I like to do that in the morning, but I have been looking at stuff at night, and I typically do, uh, particularly during the earnings season. I just give it a look, see, and see if there's anything good for tomorrow to get revved up and excited, but I do really, really like this gap. This gap will rate good enough to do. Now, the thing is that it is so much going on in it here that I don't know where this is going to be at tomorrow. So I'll have to look at the exact targets of this tomorrow morning because I think this could continue down even still, meaning that it could open tomorrow way below where it's at right now. And that's going to change the targets on this. But just looking at this right in here, you can see this is the target for, uh, this is this is a target in here. I mean, this is a target. This is a target the stock could get to tomorrow because I don't know where it's going to open tomorrow morning. And it could open under 55, and then here's the target. So it really depends where this thing opens in the morning if it gets down to that 48.50 area. It's really like 49, 40, between 49 and 48-ish. And another another good uh, trade for longer term if it doesn't get down there in the day. The stock can have big moves in it, though. I will say that. If you look back in here and some of the big bars that the stock has had, the stock can move. This bar right here is $10. I mean, when a stock is rallying, and it's rallying, 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 and it's having a lift, and the stock has had a nice lift. This price up here of the stock at one point, I think it was up around 120 ish Yeah, look, <laughs> within two pennies. Anyways, when that happened up there, the stock the stock trades like it does at a stock that's over $100 price point. And this stock really moves, really, really, really can get going. The fact that it's down here now at 57 today doesn't change the way the stock moves and trades. That's what a lot of times happens with these. Like you'll have a price, a stock at an expensive price point, it'll trade, it'll really have big moves, it could be spready, could have big stocks, but then it'll take a dip, but it's still going to trade the same as the essence of the stock, and you need to know that. So the fact that it's down where it's down right now tonight and looking for the move tomorrow doesn't mean it's still not going to trade the same as this normally trades, because because this trades, this moves. I mean, this thing moves. I haven't traded this for a long time, though. <clears throat> I've traded this for a long time. But this stock is going to have a big move in it tomorrow. I just don't know where it's going to open in the morning. That's going to determine what this does. And of course the gap rating, which I'll do in the morning, but this is a good short. So I'm putting it out there for anybody that likes this here uh, or wants to do this. This is a bearish watch for tomorrow. Absolutely 100%. And it's good. So the question is, is it going to go to a bigger target or the dream target? Or is it going to be a snail? I mean, what of it? I think with earnings season here and upon us, which I'm so excited and happy for, uh, things are going to go to bigger targets. Things are going to have nice, red, stretchy, long bars. Things are going to do that. And it's really up to you with your personal money management whether or not you want to hold something to the target or hold something to the bigger target or, or, or take something out for a quick scalp trade. I think this is personal money management decision how you want to trade for yourself. But in order to really get the most bang for your buck, in some of these days where these gaps are good, you got to hold them to some bigger numbers, and it means holding some back through a rally. And the, the only way that i found around that really to compromise is looking at the targets, looking at where I know the entry is, where I'm taking the position, and then peeling out of some and holding the rest down for a bigger target. I think that's the... That's the best compromise to be made here with these. Otherwise, you get out of the whole thing, it drops to some bigger number, you don't get the huge trade. And if you hold it for the whole trade and it doesn't go, then you got to be okay with taking a stop out. And there's days that that happens, and I, and and you know, I just know that this is going to be a good month for selling, 
even though it's summer. You would think, gosh, well, how can things go in the summer and how can they move and have big moves? Because people dump stuff. They dump stuff when it is just not performing. The question is, do, what do they dump? And this is where you have to know what to look for and what is good and what is really out there. So LL is a good bearish watch. It is a gap down. It is a short, 100%, 100% conviction. And actually, while I'm talking about this, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to blot right over here to this BBBY. And I'm going to talk about this, I think, tomorrow in the live trading room. BBBY is a short. And someone was in the room the day I was doing this BBBY and the day after, and I don't remember exactly when, uh, it was back with the gap in the end of June, calling this as a long. And it is not a long. It was not a long then. It is not a long now. It is not a long. And I spoke to someone today, a trader today, that said someone out there on the net that does a lot of stuff and makes a lot of calls was calling this as a long. So traders were going long this. But I shorted this. I had a good day in this. I shorted this gap on BBBY that happened back here on the 26th. It was a great gap. The stock has rallied now, but the stock is still a short and in a downtrend. So what many people look at when they look at these and they say, oh, well, the stock's gapped down. The company's good. I'm going to guess that this is going to get bought or predict that this is going to get bought by institutions or people because they like this company and it's a strong company or whatever people say. But that's a guess, a prediction without any information. In fact, the information that's there is telling you that this stock is a short, and it was a short in the day. And yes, it's rally back, but the trade to take is not the rally back, it's the short, it's the correct directional bias. And what I do extremely well, better than absolutely anyone out there, is read directional bias correctly. So much so that I do not deviate in any regard in trades that I take or risk in something that is in the wrong directional bias of the chart. And what's the reason I don't do that? I don't do that because at any given point in time, you could get completely clobbered by an institution taking you out if they happen to want to get in and stomp into the position and get into it. You can call it a footprint, you can call it power of money, you can call it whatever you want, whether it's institutional buying or selling, but at any given point in time that could come in and wipe your trade out and blow through your stock, by the way, and it just doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make sense to guess what to do. It doesn't make sense to predict what to do. I, I don't do that. I look at the information that I have, the information I have at the gap. And I read the price, the current price and the information in the gap. And that's what I do. And then I say, this is meeting this criteria and I'm going to do it. And so even though I'm looking in the future far in advance, when I'm saying somebody's going to go to a certain area, work in a certain direction, I'm looking at what I have right now with the information. I'm not making a guess. I'm not guessing that people are going to buy BBY because they like the company. I'm not guessing people are going to buy this gap down. I'm not predicting something like that. It would not make any sense and it does not make any sense. And actually BBY is a good short still in here, right in here right in this area, and it's still heading down. Now, if BBBY decides that it wants to be bought by institutions and people that believe in it again and want to buy it because they love the company, whatever reason, I'll see it at the moment that it happens and it will be bought. But this idea of buying stuff, making predictions or making guesses or buying stuff into support that is not doing anything to tell you to buy it at all and by someone just making a guess or prediction is not a good way to trade. It's not a good way to trade. So I'm very strict with the method that I do in trading things in the correct manner. And they they don't all, they aren't all good, meaning that they don't all meet the criteria of the gap downs. And if the gap downs don't meet the criteria, then I don't do them. I'm not flipping them. So in other words, if I have a gap down that rates poorly, I'm not going to buy it because it would rate poorly as a short. And instead of shorting it, I wouldn't short it, but I'm not flipping it and buying it. <clears throat> okay, but actually BBY rated good as a bearish gap and it was a short and I shorted this, I had a good day in it. So the point I'm trying to make is that there's so much stuff out there telling people what to do. Much of it is guessing or predicting, but no, that's not what I'm doing. I am not predicting anything here. I'm telling you that this stock is a short that the chart of this stock is broken. The stock is lower, okay? Whether it works as a day trade short tomorrow 
or the next day down, or it takes a week to break and go to some bigger number like the 4948, it's assured. It is no planet a bot. So I'm not predicting anything. I'm reading this and I'm saying this is a short. This is absolutely a short for traders because I'm seeing what's happening. I'm not predicting or guessing. I'm not guessing people are going to turn around tomorrow and buy this. Okay? I'm seeing this stock is having huge, massive selling. And what do you think this bar is here? This bar. This is a this is selling. 7044, the low of this bar. This is one bar here with 275,000 shares in it that happen here at 4.15 and 15 minute chart. This is one bar here between 4 o'clock and 4.15 Eastern time. The stock got clobbered. The stock just lost $11 down in 15 minutes. That is selling, pure, 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 huge, massive selling. This stock is not anything to buy, nothing. Let me go look at this over here. Here you can see it. Selling. Woo! There it goes. Okay. Because the only thing that makes something happen like this is a dub. Because it's too fast, too much volume, too much going on, too much, too quick, too big, too huge. It's selling. Okay. Now, that happens and sometimes the stocks that gap down and then they don't rate according to my criteria and then you don't short them. But that's why I have a set of criteria. To know that it's going to work as a day trade. To know that it's going to work as a day trade. And I'm reading what's happening here in the overall picture. And it is so important to do that. And so for people out there that are following people that are making guesses and predictions, whether you're seeing them on television, on the internet, or wherever you are, know they are guesses and predictions that don't have a basis in something that is immediate information. I'm taking the immediate information and making a decision. And that's why I'm extremely good at reading stuff into the open. In the open, in real life time, I'm seeing something that's setting up. In the real life time, I'm seeing it. And I'm seeing it in real life time in the gap. Right now, tonight, and tomorrow morning, and when I trade it, into the open, and I'm seeing it. And when I make uh, targets for longer term targets, I'm seeing them out there in the longer term. But that being said, something could change between now and then. If the stock, for in other words, if this stock doesn't get to 49 or 48 by tomorrow, and something would change in the stock chart before it would be able to have a chance to get to that number. I'd see it in live time. That's the difference between being an active trader when you're in the market every day, which I am. Every day, every day, every day. You always got to be there. You always have to be present. You always have to see what's going on. Things can change, and you have to know what to look for. You have to know what to look for, and I really, really, really do really know what to look for. So this is a good short, absolutely 100% here, LL, tomorrow. And I have no idea where it opens in the morning, but it's probably not going to be at this number. So I think this gets another push down here between now and tomorrow morning for surely. This probably opens tomorrow under 55. Probably opens tomorrow under 55. And even if it doesn't work tomorrow as a day train, which is exactly what I'm going to watch it to do to short, this chart is lower. Okay, so you cannot buy this. So this is Melissa with the stockswish.com. Good pick here for tomorrow if you want to watch LL as a day train to short. It rates good. I don't know what it is yet. I'll look at it tomorrow morning, and I'll see the setup setting where it's at. But it's definitely, definitely probably going to open lower than this right here now tomorrow morning. Good luck, everybody, on this. Nice trade here tomorrow. This should set up for, for us in LL. If you'd like more information, email me at melissa at the stockswish.com. Have a fantastic evening, everyone. I'll see you tomorrow.